Ladies and gentlemen, like it or not, there's a lot of different tactics that people use in order to farm players disproportionately to the level of skill that they should be able to. I'm one of those players because on average I can get like a 30% headshot ratio, which is still good, but really the good players are sitting between 40% headshot ratio and even pushing up to 50%. And so you may be wondering, how do I compete with these players in terms of kills per minute without having as much skill? And it's simple. And that's what this video is going to be dedicated to. There's a lot of different things that I'm going to talk about, but I do first want to mention that increasing your aim is going to disproportionately affect the amount of use that you're going to get out of this guide. If you have, say for example, a 20% headshot ratio, you've got 20% accuracy, that's probably something that you can fix. If you simply lower your sensitivity a little bit, turn off mouse acceleration, and you probably at that point should be good. Obviously, if you're wrist aiming and you don't have the capability to move with your arm like me because you just don't have enough space, you're obviously going to be limited in the like degree that you're going to be able to aim to, but you can still get to a decent level. Now, separately as well, on top of having good aim, also having good infantry skill in general is going to help a bunch too. And so I am going to mention those things and you can go research them if you want to. So for example, controlling your aim burst firing and making sure that you're not just holding down left click will help. Likewise, if you're running around aiming like at the floor instead of at head height, you're not going to be ready to shoot the opposition like as quickly as possible. And generally, you want your crosshair to rest where they're likely going to be as well. So if you're running through a door, you can generally predict, okay, I think they're going to be here. And perhaps even you pre-aim at that location because you're predicting that they're going to be there. And by doing that, that means that you don't have to wait between the delay of how long it takes you to not only stop sprinting, but then also aim down the sights. And so that decreased time will make your time to kill lower. Likewise, have you ever asked yourself when you're going into a room, why are you sprinting through the door? Unless you're a platoon leader and you're doing it because you're trying to encourage your teammates to run in through a door because they're being too passive. Unless that's your specific objective, you should generally be slowly clearing a room, slowly peeking it, and methodically clearing a room, rather than simply running all the way mid midway through the door and then finding that three people are aiming and shooting at you at the same time. Because at that point, it's a 3v1. Sure, maybe you can take down one guy if you're like decent, simply because of the position you've put yourself in. This is a less common thing. Usually I will see people strafing. I think that's like pretty common stuff. But just make sure again, like you're holding down A or you're holding down D when you're shooting someone and you are strafing left or right. Um, generally speaking, if you're moving forwards or backwards, you may as well just be standing still to the opposition because that's how they're going to see it, you know, when they're aiming at you. So you want to be moving left or right. Of course, as well, make sure you're at least in some form of cover. So if you're next to a door frame, that's an example of cover. If you're next to a box, that's some kind of cover. There's actually a playlist that kind of covers this um, on my channel that you can check out. But even, for example, uh, rails are a really good example of cover as well. Now, of course, there's a lot of underhanded methods that you can use to circumnavigate all of this, at least somewhat. Although once you've refined these skills and got decent at them, it will make compound how well you can do. Of course, there's some things I haven't even mentioned, like map awareness, which I think a lot of people have awful map awareness. But I still run Sensor Shield because generally, if you think about it, a lot of the time when you die, it's generally to like above average players statistically. So you, it's not about countering the new players, it's about countering the good players. Sensor Shield's really good for that. Now, of course, there's extrinsic things that you're not super in control of, like how good your frame rate is. If you've got a decent uh, refresh rate monitor as well, it will help. If you can control those things and you haven't already tried, it might be something you want to look into. Of course, as well, using a crosshair is recommended. And again, I have an entire graphics guide dedicated to those two topics. All right, so now let's start going into the underhanded methods that you can use in order to uh, get good at Planet Side 2 without having a bunch of skill. There's some simple ones like redeploying as much as possible, placing spawn beacons and ideally placing the spawn beacons on top of those towers uh, the little like radial towers that they're really good for spawn beacons you can usually farm up a lot of kills just doing that but there's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well for example i tower farm in a lot of the videos you'll see that you know i'm farming a tower like the, the crown or crossroads and um, usually i'll initiate that with a valkyrie 
if I don't have unlimited nanites. There is a way to get unlimited nanites and we're going to get into that now but first I do want to say if you don't have what the method that I'm about to show you you can also use Valkyries which is basically going to be by uh, using facility modules then using ASP discount then also using if possible you can use membership and those in combination the nanite membership will provide you with unlimited Valkyries but you can also use unlimited ESFs so that's Scythe, Reaver or Mosquito and you can do that with essentially unlimited nanites by using Cortium instead. Essentially you can spawn on all of these Elysium spawn tubes that you see on the map until you find one with over 20k Cortium. Then you can either use someone else's air terminal or if it's very occasionally locked you can make your own air terminal and again pull unlimited ESFs. And by doing that, then you can air to ground farm the opposition with ideally the air hammer or the banshee. The PPA scythe does also work, but it's not as good. Anyway, you can use one of those two on TR or NC and you can get a bunch of kills really easy. Then when you're about to die, ejection seat out and then continue going. If it's like a Friday or a Saturday on a double XP weekend especially, what you'll often find is a lot of new players. On top of that, all the new players will be on the second continent. All of the tryhards will be in the prime continent at prime time, trying to win the alert. So what you do is you go on the off continent with all the new players and the average players, and you can usually get a lot of kills simply by doing that. And you can further compound that by having multiple characters on each faction. So for example, if you have a TR character, NC character, and a Vanu character, and ideally you have membership on that account so you don't have a queue. Although if you're on the off continent it doesn't matter. And that essentially means regardless of which factions are fighting which, you always will have a fight that you can go to and you can do it on the times that you want to. So you can, for example, always make sure that you're the one that's in overpop, which is one of the things that people generally try to use if they're trying to kind of like use Zarg Safi tactics and so yeah, as I kind of alluded to, being in overpop is generally recommended, like a good 50-50 fight's ideal, but if you can't get that, you know, 55%, 60% is where you want to be. Um, really, you just want to make sure that you can always get a few kills, picking people off, um, being at the front of the fight, in those kind of things. The reason that overpop is so good is because it means that essentially there's, you're always 2v1 and you've always got people around you that the enemy is shooting at and so you're less exposed um, and all of that does help you survive. In the past I've also tried to exploit the Cobalt Ant which was very strong. It was extremely strong to be honest and overpowered and I used it a lot um, but it has been nerfed. It's still in a decent place so medium anvils into a Cobalt Ant if you're kind of like sitting around doing nothing, especially if you're in ops and you can't really overextend, just pulling a medium anvil can work just to get you some kills as people start to push in. Obviously as well, this should go without saying, but using the meta loadouts are going to offer you a better result. So for example, generally people recommend heavy assault. Combat medic also used to be a good alternative, but because nano weave's been removed, shotgun's just one shot combat medic now and it's just ridiculous, so really heavy assault's where you want to be. You can type in planet side 2 loadouts or planet side 2 classes and my video should come up on that if you want to check it out. Another nice little tip is to start using bolt action snipers even if you're bad at sniping in areas in which you're getting zarked. So say the opposition zarking you with between 48 to 96 players. They're all sitting there looking at your spawn room. What you can do is just get a bolt action sniper and just hit them in the head whilst they're standing still looking at you. One thing that I would disincentivize is point holding. Point holding is going to be a lot of grenade spam, a lot of C4 spam, a lot of maxes coming from the opposition, air to ground, and all of that in combination with even flashes and concussions is going to lead to a bad time if you're at all worried about statistics. Now personally I think point holding is very rewarding and fun but again if you're trying to get a high KPM it may not be the best idea. Again unless you're with really skilled players like B-Way or something you're just not going to get away with it. Now of course if you really do want to go play the objective to some extent you can go solo cap bases and from that you will get some degree of opposition to go to and sometimes you can even cap the base against them especially if you're like doing pretty well in terms of aim you can fight multiple opponents in a row especially as heavy assault 
So solo capping bases, especially at prime time, can work in order to garner a response. And again, solo capping bases is also super useful as a tactic if there's nowhere else to go because like all the other bases are like vehicle phase. Now with that being said, having a good aim will just circumnavigate everything I've talked about in this video. Even if you don't have good infantry skill in any other way, if you simply have a good headshot ratio, you usually do pretty well. And so you may just want to consider optimizing that first if you can, and then afterwards look at everything else in this guide. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to leave your own comments, thoughts, feelings, and opinions in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Not only does it help a bunch, but it also means you'll keep up to date with any future content. So again, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day. I'm out. GG. Bye-bye.